Yeah, but overall, I mean, overall, I th I've gotten really good feedback. I mean, all the articles have really gotten, I mean, because it's, it's organic on the show, you know, and it's sure. not, it's a, it wasn't produced and it didn't feel like the, you know, the producers really didn't have a hand in any of our stories. These, these were all, ironically, what was happening at that time. Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest we discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. That's right, we have a great episode today. House of Ho is in the house. Uh, they are a show on HBO Max streaming, okay? And it's a reality show. It's about a Vietnamese family that immigrated here um, to Houston, Texas. American dream, okay? They made it big, filthy, rich. And this show's about their life and uh, what they do with that money and fame and everything that comes with it. Um, and just, the, you know, as far as an immigrant family, too, and that dynamic, that culture uh, differences and, and what goes on. It's a really interesting show, really cool. Definitely went, the show went where I didn't think it was going to go. I binge the whole season. You know, I'm going to have them on the show. Of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to binge it. So I encourage you to do the same. If you've already seen a couple episodes, go ahead and watch the podcast. Uh, maybe, you know, finish it off. If you haven't, just stick around. Listen to this and it might, uh, you know, get you to watch the show. So look, I had a great time. It's an awesome show. Great people. Really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, look, they talk about the show. What, like what, what, what was the original idea for the show? Okay. And also just the reactions of people watching the show and, and what sort of feedback they're getting and that sort of thing. And just different stories about the show and behind the scenes stuff. Um, really cool. And also if there's going to be another season. So stick around. You're going to want to listen to that. Okay. Very exciting. All right. So look. What I'm going to do first is we're going to play a little trailer for the show for House of Ho, so you get an idea of what it is, and then there'll be a word from our sponsor, and then we're just going to jump right into the interview, okay? So please enjoy today's episode, House of Ho, on HBO Max. Please check it out. And the, our sponsor, of course, Texas Real Food. So please enjoy the episode. <laughs> Decor, Leslie. Uh, less is more. You're definitely not a hoe. Why? More is more. My family is Vietnamese, but loves being American. My brothers are named Washington and Reagan. I was a disappointment because I was a girl, so I'm named Judy. My parents are refugees, so they came over here in 1975. Most Vietnamese families settled in Houston because of the tropical weather. My main business now is banking and investment. My dad's retirement is coming up. I'm taking over. My son, I mean, they show me he's ready. What are you wearing? This is sexy. Being Washington's wife isn't easy. I'm the one that has to make him accountable for his actions. His mom used to, but because I married him, it's my role. Dad. My mom said, if you marry Leslie, you don't owe me and dad nothing for the rest of your life. Look at what I have now. But I've grown to love her over time. Should that be on TV? My family, they're old school Vietnamese. I've done everything you have asked of me my whole life. I know that you prefer that I stay married, but I'm not asking for your approval anymore. So you told me support that? No, I won't. I've been enjoying my life as a divorced woman. Of course, Aunt Tina is the first person who wants me to start dating. Do you have any Pepsi? Hello. Looks hey, like birth control. That. Me? Need a birth control? No way, Jose. <laughs> it's complicated being part of my family. You're like living in this life that is almost totally dependent on your parents. Thanks, okay. mommy. Be good, boy, okay? okay. Everything looks good from the outside, but the inside is just so hard. When it's good between us, it's good. But when it's bad, it's bad. You're my first wife. I hope you're my only wife. Hit it. Hit it? All men <sighs> like that. Is that your marriage advice? I know how to hit it.
The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. Well, thank you. I have Washington. Thank you so much, brother. How you doing? Look and look and fly, brother. Look at you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I like the colors you're wearing today. Uh, you know what? I got the mask ready to go at any time. Just right. in case, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Amazon, Amazon comes to the door. I'm like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> ready to go. Uh, so, hey, thank you guys so much for for joining us, man. This is uh, this is awesome. It's it's a pleasure. I'm so excited to talk to you guys. And uh, yeah, you know, I don't do really interviews, okay? I just kind of have conversations with people. So we'll just keep it easy and yeah. you know what I mean? I'm texting, right? We're just gonna keep it keep it chill like. and keep it easy. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so look, look, let's just get into this. Like I'm so, this is such a great show. I, I binged the whole season, you know, uh, just one shot, just boom, let's just knock this out and do it. I just, I was into it. It was a story I was in. It took me, it, the way it began is not how I thought it was gonna end. And that's a, the best story of, of all. Um, but what I'm curious most is like for you guys, right? Living this regular life, well, regular life for, for some people, but not with any, not with any cameras or right. Like, right. right this whole, whole thing documenting. I'm curious is, is that number one thing of, of how big a change that was, you know, for y'all, I know you asked for it, but at the same time, still gotta be intense. Oh yeah. It was, it was really intense. We had, I think like 20 something people in our house throughout the whole filming process. Wow. And so as you're, you know, talking about situations with other family members or talking about how you feel, there is like five cameras in your face, you know, 10 people in the background. <laughs> so it's something that it's so private, right? Between like a husband and wife scenario that I would never want anyone else to even learn about. We had to yeah. talk about it and, and everyone's, everyone's <laughs> crying with you, you know, everyone's like casting tissues. Oh, wow, wow. You mean like the camera people and stuff, you mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, that yeah. has to be, you're right. That has to be intense for sure. It was. Wow. wow, yeah, that's crazy. What about for you, Washington? What was it like for you? For me, it was just like another day, but with cameras <laughs> around, you know. He not, loves this. I mean, you know, it's, you know, it, it, my wife, you know, most people don't know, she doesn't really cry when like bad things happen. She cried. I'm a crier. I'm just an emotional, like I cry through good stuff. I cry through bad stuff. I mean. She cried at the first movie we watched together. It was X-Men. X-Men. <laughs> and someone died. And I looked over and I'm like, I'm like I always fall asleep and she's like, <laughs> and I'm like. Hey I'm man, like, oh. Cyclops, Cyclops took a hit. You know, I don't know who it was. Yeah. But, you know. If Cyclops can yeah. make yeah. her cry, I mean, don't blame me for making her cry. America. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that is that's hilarious that's hilarious yeah i mean i can only imagine uh you know ha having it around and i love how everybody takes it differently right like that's the that's the funny uh yeah. that's the funny part about it <laughs> uh you know i'm curious too about this uh watching the show the first thing that hit me was um you know the green right the logo the money the, the that like that's that's the sort of the, the first thing that's that's thrown at you about the show, the glamour, the lights, you know, that, that sort of thing. Um, I'm curious when y'all, you know, were putting the show together, what sort of idea did y'all have about the show? You know, did, did, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I saw an interview where um, somebody said like, you know, that y'all's parents thought it was gonna be something different, right? Like some sort of like, Discovery Channel documentary style or something yeah. about, you know, rags to riches. I don't know, like a David Attenborough, you know what I mean? And it turned out into what it was, which is a great show. Uh, but I'm just curious what sort of talks there were. Did y'all, what sort of hand y'all had in it or, you know? Well, yeah, like, you know, I, I kind of started the project on my own. Uh, you know, I, I always wanted to go to film school. I applied to USC film school. I wanted oh, to right on. live in California. I thought it was cool. And being Asian, my parents were like, Washington, if you go to USC, 
even though my dad has an executive MBA from there. <laughs> or if you go to UT, then that means you're on your own. And I'm like, what? What do you mean? I need you to go to the, the interviews with me so I can like, it's a good school. And, you know, my, my father had, you know, a younger brother that went to UT and partied his way out. And I had some other Asians that went to USC. And so he, he was like, I know you, son. Like, you go to one of those, <laughs> it's going to be over anyway. So I went out there. I slept on one of his, like, his uh, military officers from the Vietnam War's couch, like in oh, a wow. ghetto at home. And then I'm walking into USC trying to act like, you know, all whatever. And they're like, where are your parents? And I'm like, they couldn't afford to come here. And, you know, the thing was is that all my life I would always wondered what if – what if I really actually tried, you know, um, to get into Hollywood? And yeah. once I had kids, I, don't go meet, we can't go to I felt like, <laughs> I felt like, you know. Speaking of kids, right? I was sitting in my, I was sitting in my office. I thought I made it. You know, my wife's calling me all the time. Like, where are you? Where are you? And I was just miserable because I like wasn't doing something that I thought I might love to do. Yeah. And so I could never tell my kids to search for their passion. So I told my wife, I said, look, I'm gonna go out to LA. I'm gonna be late to Oklahoma. And like, <laughs> she said, what? I go, well, my dad told me I could. And she goes, you ain't fucking going to LA. You're going to Oklahoma. Like, we gotta go see grandma. I go, no, that can wait. I'm gonna go look for some marijuana farms. And then like, <laughs> You know, my, and then my dad has a bank out there in Anaheim and Irvine. So okay. on the corporate card, I'm supposed to be looking for potential clients that need financing for real estate hotels. But of course, Washington pulls a Washington and goes straight to Spago, sits at the <laughs> bar with his crocodile boots, with his hat, like down in 1942s. Like, oh, yeah, my dad's like, what are you doing, dude? I'm like, I'm looking for business. And he's like, yeah, I'm solving problems. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm at the bar solving problems. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, it don't sound like it. I go, Dad, remember you told me if you diversify your portfolio, it would be a lot safer. So I'm going to start looking <laughs> for movies. And he's like, what? And I go, yeah. And he's like, what's the potential? I said, 30 years and 2 billion. And he goes, what's the risk? I said, I might lose my wife. Jeez. Oh, he said, well, go for it then. I said, really? <laughs> he's, he's, I said, as soon, soon as he said that, he said, yeah, go for it. Yeah. He, he, people, he goes, yeah. He goes, because if your wife, like, if she can't let you search for your dreams and passion and leaves you, then she wasn't right for you anyway. But your kids will always be rich. I got them. You know, just go for it. It's just $250 risk. But like, at least you can tell your kids you tried. So sure. that's how it happened. But when we were doing the character development, I didn't tell my family I signed these paper, papers <laughs> on behalf of them. And I didn't <laughs> tell them that like I wrote the characters that they would be. And then I didn't tell my mom that like she had a bigger role than she did. I told yeah. my sister and my wife that, you know, all you got to do is like show that I'm married and I got a sister and it's all good, you know. But, you know, when the producers got to meet the family, they were like, we thought we thought you were interesting. But, dude, your family is so much better than you. <laughs> they look better. They're honest. They're authentic. They're like so like. And I'm like, I know. I told you that. <laughs> I told so, you that. You know, my wife had to prove to the world that she would do anything for her husband. So I said, look, if you don't sign, it just shows like you're not down for me. I thought you were ride or die. And then I told my sister like, yeah, oh yeah, you always look after your little brother, but you can't just like show your face one time. So she signed. Then I, then my dad, of course he signs right away because he's like me, he likes to be famous and this stuff. And then my mom, you know, she has that look like, She's, she's like, got to talk about it. She got to think about it. Like, yeah. She's like, you and your dad, 
okay, this last time, this last time, okay, last time. And I go, okay, last, time. last time, mom. Last time. And so she signs. And, you know, Aunt Tina, you know, I hustled her by saying, look, Aunt Tina, I know you want to pay off, you know, your son's uh, dental school loan, don't you? I go, I don't think. <laughs> that's, that's what got her. That's what yeah, got I was like, I don't think you can cut enough hair or do whatever you do to pay that off. She but seems look. like she would be all down for cameras, party, right? Like, oh, yeah. it's yeah. that seems like her world. But I, I didn't bring her into the end. I didn't put her in the sizzle reel. And so I go, and she was like, she started crying. She was like, man, I can't believe you think about me like that. I go, you're a hoe. I know how it is. <laughs> you're supposed to pay for your son's education and shit, you know? You're not part yeah. of the world. Yeah. And so she was like really touched. And, and so it, it was natural. And nice. then uh, Sammy, uh, Sammy actually, you know, her her mom like had passed away like a year before. before. So I just oh, wanted to be there. For sorry her. to hear that. Yeah, and so she kind of lived with us, and you know, helped me out with all the paperwork and stuff. Sure. And, you know, at the end of the day, it was like, man, we're we're from Texas, right? Yeah. I told her, I told HBO, I said, look, man, come to my hood, come to Texas. Let me show you what it's about. When they came here, you know, they were like, you know how it is, you know? And I'm like, yeah, you see the horses, you see the cattle. They're like, <laughs> wow. And I'm like, so it's going to be cheaper. You're going to get some tax rebates. You're going to open up doors for other people, open up other people's minds in my community that think they can't do it. Yeah, and, good point. And that's what they really loved about Texas and Houston. They love that you know it's a it's a culture that's misunderstood yeah uh, houston's a great city doesn't get enough yes. attention yeah and, and for us it was a way for us to kind of pay houston back for what it's done for our family that's awesome and, you know that's why we really wanted to be based out of here for filming and not traveling and doing all that until we established that's interesting yeah i i did was wondering that if they had maybe proposed you know set, you know basing it all out of la or some you know what i mean some somewhere but y'all yeah. were like nope we're gonna stay yeah. h-town proud and yes. you know yeah dude, it's, it's that's awesome from, you know it's, it's yeah. where the family is based from and it's a city that gave my father-in-law so many opportunities so they really wanted to showcase that. And plus a lot of our favorite restaurants and shopping centers. And friends you know. that have supported us yeah. through the years. Yeah. And, and we wanted to show them love if we could. And you know, It wouldn't be the, real, right? Like if all of a sudden y'all are transplanted somewhere else and, and supposed right. to act like you're from there, right? Like, and you right. have all, yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah I, I think it also makes it interesting, especially for Texans, like, it's great, you know, not just for just for anybody, really, you know, to learn about so many different parts of, you know, not just y'all's, you know, culture of Vietnamese culture, but also Texas culture, too. You know, yeah. I know that's the focus, but I think that's great that it just encompasses, you know, a little bit of everything. It's crazy, right? I, I was I went to my, uh, in my I was in my office. I went to all the employees, like the boiler room, the traders, the broker sales. And I go, hey, guys, <laughs> I love guess it. what? I found a really good way to save us money on marketing. And they're like, what now, Washington? I go, <laughs> nah, yeah. all right, just pretend you're working. I'm going to film a little bit. We're going to look rich like we're balling. <laughs> and then, like, I'm going to go out to Hollywood. And then, like, you know, when I get rich, I'm going to make us all rich. And then it's going to be all good. And then y'all don't have to show up on time no more. And they're like, what? I go, yeah, dude, trust me. One, I'm one guy in the back's like, I don't show up on time anyway. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I said, I always taught y'all, if you don't, if you don't, like, if you don't throw the lure out there in the water, you ain't going to catch nothing. Like, all it is is 250 bucks so that you can, like, know that you tried or you searched for something. It's 250 bucks but you might get lucky. You never know, you know? And for me, it was just something where I could tell my kids like, Hey, always go for your passion at least one time. But when you go, go all out, no matter oh, yeah. what anyone says. Yeah. Sure. And, and, sure. And then this happened and we decided that as a family, how could we help our community? How could we help each other? How could we inspire other people to not be afraid to not be fearful, to understand that the American dream is alive and well, that the American dream is that we are a melting pot, 
that it doesn't matter whether you're from New Jersey, New York, Texas, or whatever. As long as you're being yourself, yeah. you're going to be respected. As long as you're being yourself, you're going to be loved. But be able to be courageous enough to do it. Sure. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, uh, absolutely right point. Yeah. There's absolutely. only one, look at you. You know, you're successful. You're. Well, you, 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 let's not get but, carried away here. Well, but like, <laughs> yeah. think about it. You did. You have to do everything yourself, right? No well, we got to We got to Yeah, that's true. That's exactly it. Yeah, that that's what my father taught me and my mother as well. Work hard. Do it, you know? Do it for yourself. Uh, yeah, people aren't gonna do things for you. You, you gotta. Yeah, yeah you absolutely. If yeah. you want it, don't complain. Go go get it. You know? Yeah, go get it. Absolutely, a hundred percent. You know, we always say there's no real. At least in our my group of friends or family, like there's no real uh formula for success really just do it you gotta work hard and do do things i mean that, that's, that's yeah. it bottom line it's it. that simple it's uh, really that's i mean it sounds like crazy right like end a podcast scene done right it's like that's it just get out and do it you want something yeah. find find the steps it takes to get there and start doing it one step after another right that's that's literally it yeah yeah um you know i'm curious about this too as well um you know having uh you know my my family is is mixed actually my mom's from mexico my father's from st louis missouri so i grew up in a house with two two cultures too but i understand like you know trying to live up to one especially in the states right as well um and and seeing the the television show even though i'm not asian uh, i can still relate to a lot of the things because i feel like my family's this like on my mom's side you know, in my Latin side, it's the same, same dynamics and same sort of, right. yeah, like just the cultural stuff. Like, you know, y'all talk about in the show of, you know, what men are supposed to do or what women are supposed to do. It's like all, it's like, oh my God, I've heard all these conversations before. Right. It's just like, yeah. holy cow, this is like, it's crazy how much you can relate to it, it you know, um, as well, you know. Yeah, I just would like to just dig de deeper into that. What do y'all think about that? Uh, that's, you know, that's what, you know, we're really proud of, actually, is that, you know, we understand that we're just human beings at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, the Asian part was just because for marketing or whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, we cry, we, we, we have stress, we have struggles. Yeah. And the yeah. only thing that carries us through is our faith. Um, is is our our trust and and love for each other, our love for fun, because uh, at the end of the day, you know, when you come from different cultures like you, there's always that. I feel like it's actually an advantage. It makes you stand out. Sure, and you use that to your advantage. You know, yeah. I feel like this country is built on immigrant backs, right? So. You know, we, I think, I feel like every second generation immigrant that's born in America has that struggle between, you know, living in America and what we're used to and what you're seeing every day and then coming home to a family that's traditionally, you know, yeah. um, Mexican or, or Italian or Vietnamese or, you know, Chinese and carrying those cultural through your yourself, you know, and finding that self between that balance. Like I am not well versed in, in Vietnamese. I can speak enough to speak to my parents because I had to. My parents didn't learn English until they got here, you yeah. know. And, and I'm trying to pass it to my kids because they will learn less than I will, yeah. you know, learning the Vietnamese language. And so it's just keeping that culture alive. Sure. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. And this is just our story of of how we do it in our family. You know, like the traditional holidays that you saw on the show, like uh, Lunar New Year yeah that, that's so big in asia you know in, in vietnam i think they shut down for a whole week you know my nanny's month, already asked month. a month wow it, it's huge it's all, huge all, all of asia shuts down for a month <clears throat> yeah wow because everybody from the small towns they go back to visit their family i see i see yeah. okay yeah okay. it's, it's so, yeah. bigger than new year's here in america you know where you just <laughs> you just celebrate for one day and then yeah the day, and that's it. <laughs> totally like, this is, yeah so it's huge in the wow. asian Wow, and so to funny. for us to celebrate that here is a big deal. And of course, you know, we can't stop working for a month. <laughs> yeah, we can, yeah. <laughs> I wish, I wish, totally. you know, but you know, my nanny's already asked off for the whole like week and I'm like, uh, <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> She's like, I'm giving you a break. I could have asked for the month. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, that that's great. I you know, I love that. Yeah, finding that balance. I love that. I think I think that's why a lot of people love the show too. You know, for me, like when I was growing up, you know, grew up in like Acres Homes, then I went to Second Baptist, then like went to another pri private school. So for me, being Vietnamese, I kind of like um never really felt like I fit in sure anywhere. Yeah. And so what I learned, you know, from my dad, he was like, look, just embrace it. You know, you look at it as, you know, you're lucky. You learn something else, learn some other culture, but use it. That's true. Use it for your advantage. Because yeah. the thing is, is if you, if you think in the ways of most people, which is like, man, I didn't get that deal because of I'm Vietnamese, or I didn't get that deal because of my name or whatever, right? Well, I wanted to inspire people that, hey, man, I'm gonna make my son look cool, right? I, I need, I, I never felt cool because I was Asian, because it's like, I'm, I mean, yeah, Jackie Chan, Bruce, like, whatever, <laughs> joke. like, oh yeah, Washington, do you, do you know how to use money check? I'm like, what the. F Totally. Like, that, that's got to suck, too. Hey, right? Washington, oh, uh, since you're a hoe, is your mama a hoe, too? Oh, God. So to me, it was always like, all right, one day I'm going to make everyone know the hoes, and it's going to be a legacy, and yeah. every hoe is going to feel like proud to be a hoe. And, you <laughs> know, that. that was just really, I told her that. She didn't believe me. I was like, no, I'm for real. You know, Stanley <laughs> Hoke family in Macau, they they done great things in the east. Yeah. Hoes are very respected in the east and in London and stuff. But in America, it's like, you know, a hoe is a hoe. <laughs> a lie. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I get yeah. it. I get it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a that's oh. a crazy uh that's a crazy struggle for sure. I'm glad you guys, you know, in the I mean, face yeah, of I adversity got, went uh, against it. One time, uh, me and my sister, we were, we were tennis players, played for yeah. the school, right? And these dudes walked by, like, it was on Westview, Bingo area, and like, they're like calling the, all the girls hoes or whatever. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I got 10 white boys behind me. I got like two dudes, black and Mexican right here. And like, I'm fighting them, and these dudes are just standing there. And then like, I wake up in an ambulance. And oh. that's just, they were calling my sister a hoe, right? So the thing is, it's like, it, it's like that hoe term, you know? And then that hey ho song came out and all that stuff. I don't want my son to go through and feel the way I did. It, 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 sure. it can affect your emotional self-esteem and stuff like that. I don't want my sure. daughter to feel that way. Absolutely. You know? I like that, you, but you, you know what's, you you guys lean into it on the show. I, that's also another mm -hmm. part that I like too, and that a lot of people I know that watch the show like that as well. Y'all lean into that word and what it means in this country, right? And so, like, I love that y'all lean into it. You know, what else are you gonna do? And teach your kids. You know that way. You're right. You know, kids right. are cruel, man. Right? People just yeah, they are. <laughs> fucking idiots. I mean, right? They're just God it pisses me off. Right? It's like, oh Jesus yeah so stupid it's just yeah it's it's it is it's so stupid right it's it's crazy uh but I, again i love how you guys uh lean into it uh you know this is something i'm curious about what what was like i'm curious i know you guys got a lot of feedback from the show i'm sure it came out friends family everybody talking right just strangers right fans what was the feedback that surprised you all the most to hear you were just like oh really you know someone got that or i, I got <laughs> I got one uh, last night. It was like one of the the best ones. Hey, let me. I'm gonna go get my phone. One second. Oh, <laughs> no, I got I got a lot of marriage advice. Um, really? But really, a lot of a lot of I mean, a lot of marriage advice from people that are um, girls that are like 20 years old, no kids, <laughs> never been married. You know, just like in my opinion, I think you should do this. Um, I was. Uh, you know, you, oh, I, mean, God. People, I love, I love that they're, they're so invested in the show, you know, and I sure. get a lot of, um, are you okay? And I'm thinking like, what episode are you on? You know, I think people are just <laughs> messaging me as they're watching each episode. And I say, well, obviously you haven't gotten to episode 
seven, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Based on what question they ask you, you know what episode yeah, they're on. Yeah, I can that's, see what that's episode they're on. Yeah. Or, or they're, um, they're just so upset on my behalf that, that my mother-in-law would say such a thing to me, you know? Sure. Um, and, and they sure. don't realize that these scenes are filmed like three, four hours. And they take literally like a snip of that whole scene. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah. Just like, a picture. Yeah. Yeah don't say something to your mother-in-law. I can't believe she said that to you. And I think at the same time, you know, it's my mother-in-law, you know, so you pick and choose your battles. I mean, I obviously don't agree with everything that she does, but I also recognize that she has, you know, our best interests at heart. She's not malicious. Of course. So I Absolutely. can choose my, my battles with her. Um, but it's just so funny that these feedbacks, I mean, overall good feedback, overall really good. I mean, I even had some saying that, you know, like I, uh, that I'm, so uptight and I, they they don't blame washington for being who he is <laughs> damn I know. oh my god haters right i, I guess you're gonna have everything probably a little gotta, bit of everything i gotta give you love because you're from oh <laughs> oh that's what i'm talking about damn I, yeah. don't, I, I don't even own a cowboy hat to be honest with you. <laughs> this is my dad's you know i love it that's awesome this is his player hat the play <laughs> You know, my dad's a player. Yeah, but overall, I mean, overall, I th I've gotten really good feedback from. I mean, all the articles have really gotten. I mean, because it's it's organic on the show, you know, and it's sure. not. Uh, it wasn't produced, and it didn't feel like the you know the producers really didn't have a hand in any of our stories. These were all, ironically, what was happening at that time, you know, because we're not actors, and so we can't, you know. Yeah. Come up with Totally. Yeah. So yeah. it just so happens that it lined up with you know Judy's story and the me and Washington story. So this 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 guy, yesterday. Hey Washington, congrats on the great HBO special. My family and I watched it, and I respect it so much. Your family story represents so many Asian Americans out there. I'm not sure if you remember me. We met at the Anthony Anderson Golf Tournament two years ago. Thanks for taking a moment to speak some encouraging words to me after you heard about the good work our group has been doing in Compton. That meant a lot. Your personal story and struggle on the show was really powerful to me, and I'm sure for so many others. Thanks for the courage to share that. You know, and, and you know, those, those type of messages, it, it, it's like, it, and she has to remind me that it balances out actually all the haters comments yeah. that I did. She's right. Yeah. She's All right. The, the, the stuff like that. But we're new to this thing. And, yeah, absolutely. You know, like my, yes. my, my publicist, our publicist told me, you know, like you're going to have haters on a whole different level. Yeah. You know, the, everybody the, has an opinion, but, right? But, but you have sure. to re relive everything, you know, and yeah, that's me, a good point. For me, it was like, you know, to see my wife, my sister, my parents, my family work as hard as they had to do just for, for me to to have a chance, you know, it was it it's something I have to remind myself, right? Is that, That's awesome. You know, they didn't do it for them, you know, they did it for me. So, yeah. you know, I should be grateful. I should um not let all the noise get to my head. Sure. You know? And it's not, it, it, that's been the challenging part for me. Uh, for anybody, you know, can't imagine it really. And look, think of the best thing ever done or created. There's someone that hates it or thinks it's wrong. It doesn't matter what it is. Right. You name yeah. it. You, yeah. I mean, right. It's like, right. you can't, right. you can't, you just can't win with some people, you, can't. you know? No. So just forget that, you know, like, yeah. uh, you know, that those messages like the one you just read i'm with you like we get messages on the podcast people you know comments wh whatever it may be right all the platforms right. Th that's what i i love those things i that's what keeps me going right because there are some some yeah. haters that that i'll do a show or so you know patrick why did you say this or what are you doing that oh you're an asshole or whatever <laughs> whatever it may be uh yeah. you know but, it, but yeah, yeah i'm with you throw you off your game and you forget sure and you're sure like, what am I? Yeah, uh, we're human. We have hearts, yeah. right? Like it matters to us. We care, right? Like that's right. 
that's the truth of it. Um, so yeah, I, I, well, I love that attitude, you know, that you guys have, and I'm glad that, you know, there's so many people that are enjoying the show. I mean, I know I do. I know everyone that I know, uh, loves the show. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, I love the feedback, you know, that y'all are, are getting for the show. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious I'm, if, could we do something? I mean, you guys said, uh, Washington, how much Vietnamese do you know? Are you pretty fluent yourself? Do. Kind you of. Know, I'm better than her. <laughs> he's like, he's like, <laughs> if, if, look, trust me. If you know how it is when you speak Spanish, <laughs> but like you're married and you don't use it for a while. Sure. But like, you know, if you, you know, it's just, I think I'm better than her. <laughs> I was wondering if we could do some uh, translations. <laughs> Could we do some Vietnamese translate? Yeah. Let's see if we could just for some, you know, just some simple stuff for people to uh, learn some Vietnamese words. I thought it would be fun. Uh, so ju we'll just start simple. How do you say hello in Vietnamese? Xin chào. Let me, I'm, I'm going to see if I can repeat that. Xin chào. Xin chào. Yes. That's okay. the respectful way to say it. Okay. How do you like, you know, with your, yeah. with your girlfriends <laughs> or your boyfriend, right? Like your, your friends. It's more like what? It's more like Wait. yeah, yeah. It's. <laughs> I, mean, I just go straight for the kiss, honestly. You just <laughs> you're like, but we don't need no no hellos. Uh, yeah. oh, how do you say goodbye? How do you say goodbye? Uh, it, it's it's the same as jiao, and um, you know, like in Hawaii, it's the same. Like it's hello like, and goodbye is the same. But if you oh want okay. To but if you want, if she's a hoe, you're like, Diddy. like, get the f like that. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. But like, yeah, you don't want to say like, ciao, like, I see. Okay. Like, okay. Okay. It's like, That's my mom's mad at me. she's like, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We get, we get the chancla in Mexico, which is the, the, uh, the sandal, the sandal comes off. Oh, oh fly, yeah. fly, flies across the room. The worst is when the yeah. fork comes. The forks. Oh, in the hand, right? I've yeah. I've been stabbed yeah. in the hand. Just, yeah. jeez, it's like, like blood. Just, uh, okay. How about show? This will be the last one here. How about show me the money? That seemed like an appropriate one. People should learn in Vietnamese. Show me the money. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, that's a good one. Show me the money is. Yeah, uh, Yeah, Ding. Yeah. Ding, ding, okay. Where's the money? It's like, not show me. Like, it's like, where's the money? Ding, no. Okay. Ding, no. Ding, no. Yeah. My wife says that to me every night. <laughs> <laughs> and then I say, Dee Dee. And then you say, Dee Dee. Yeah. You say, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I love it. That's hilarious. That is so funny. Uh, so, what's ha so, what's the, is there any news on like uh, the next season or? what we might expect more episodes. I mean, I, for one, just binge, so I feel like a little selfish asking that. Uh, like, I'm yeah, already ready to watch more. We are still waiting to hear for season two or, or the, the green light for it. We haven't heard back yet, but we're told it should be soon. So cross your fingers. Yes, yes. Okay, so get the word out. Tweet it, right? Tweet it, yep. Facebook it, and TikTok it. I, I need your help, so... Um, you know, I'm hosting uh, my, the inaugural Celebrity Golf Classic at Memorial Park in Houston, Texas for charity to raise money for the Houston Parks Board. That's to raise awesome. Money for the Boys and Girls Club of America and for the Lift Fund, which helps, you know, female minority owned businesses uh, uh, get micro funds and educated. And so yeah, I'd love That's for you amazing. to help promote that absolutely yes 100 percent. we'll we'll push that 100 percent. i'll do a big push at the beginning i would love for you to uh, be for our intro too gosh that would be that would be awesome we're, love we're, for you to be one of the celebrities to play with the, the, the oh spot. i'm not a celebrity you, you don't golf? want me i i look i don't play golf. i mean i play golf but i'm not you know what i mean you can I'm stand it's, just it's more of a celebrity type i'm doing nine holes you know cigars hang out like yeah I'm yeah performing on, on the golf range really holy shit wow that's awesome that's amazing what day what are the dates it's may 4th because they're closed on tuesday so the theme is cinco de mayo 
Black Eyed Peas have their new album called Mamacita. Uh, my wow. old boss, Javier Loya, the minority owner of the Texans, Veneno Tequila is going to sponsor. And I want to sh- I want to show the world that, you know, Houston is not just the most culturally diverse per capita, but that we when we work together, when we use our time and energy and resources and not just money, then we can do something where the world can see who we really are. Because yeah. the feedback from season one was like, yo, dude, like from fans all over the world, they're like, man, I didn't know if Houston was like LA. I go, it's not like LA, dude. It's <laughs> better than that. Yeah. I go, it's not like, you know, people, you know, and I'm like, so the park just got renovated. The Houston Oak, the PJ just got held there. But like, I knocked on the door and I said, look, this is what I want to do for the city. I want to show the city that like, it's about working together. It's yeah. about being one. It's about, you know, we, we, it, our, our PR team for the city of Houston, it's been the wrong people. It's, we're not just oil and gas, but we're, right. we're agriculture. We're Hispanic, we're Asian, we're Indian, we're Nigerian. It's like one of the most diverse cities. Yeah, and, 100%. And, and, the food, yeah. just look at the food you can get in Houston. Yeah, right. right. And people think it's just a bunch of good old boys and oil and gas people. Yeah, it? that's true. That's you very know? true. So that's, that's what I told the city and they loved it and they gave us the whole part. That's awesome. Wow. That's awesome. I completely agree. Like I always tell people that it is the most diverse food city mm-hmm. in Texas, first of all. It's Houston. It is in the world. It could in the world. It could be in the world. You're right. They have it, it, anything you want to eat. They have it. Right. You can get good. it, and it's right. good. And, and there's three not- more places. Right. It's yeah. like, and you don't get ripped off unless you know you still. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know. Yeah. You want good Chinese food. You want good. Man- You're gonna get the real deal. Yeah. You know? But the Absolutely. thing is, the PR and all the other cities, they use a big budget because they make money for, from the travel industry. Sure, the tourism. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, But like, yep. there's not a city like Houston where you actually have an opportunity. You, you know, 500K, 300K, you're living in good. You're living in a yeah. mansion. You know, yeah. you're living in a good property value. You're living sure. a good life. Sure. You got a good community, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, it needs, I mean, that's why Joe Rogan just moved to Austin. Yeah. That's why McConaughey went to Austin. Yeah. That's, but the thing is, to me, I love Austin. I got real estate. But the thing is, I used to live at Adobe. But the thing is, Austin. I'm, I'm in Austin. That's where I'm at. Yeah, I love Austin. But yeah. Houston is is just not oil and gas only. Yeah, yeah. I love right. Houston. Yeah, I right. love Houston. It's a great music city, too. Yeah. My boy owns White Oak Music Hall. And comedy. Yeah. Rap, yeah. like hip hop, like Travis Scott came out of here, you know. Yes. Were, Sports, you know, right? Like, it has everything. It's has near everything. the coast. Yes. You know, so you I'm with you guys. I didn't grow up in Austin. Austin. I grew up in the DFW area, but I've been in Austin for Where? seven seven years. Oh, okay. I went to college in Dallas. I met yeah. her when she was living in Dallas. Oh, right on. Yeah. Dallas. That's where my family is, is, is from. That's yeah. where I grew up. Yeah. That area for sure. Uh, but Austin's great too. I do love it. Uh, I moved here to start a food truck. I had a food truck in Austin for five years called Boca. Which I did span, you know, pa- Spanish, Paul Spanish food. My boys. Who? Paul Key? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know people that have worked for him. I never, I never, uh, wor- worked with him, but I've definitely known quite, actually quite a few people that have, uh, worked at his places. He he's, uh, known for like being like, one of those chefs that's, uh, just very meticulous detail oriented. that's why people like working for him. Yeah. So you, yeah. you don't have the food truck no more. No, man. I sold it, uh, last year, uh, the year before, the last south, last south by before the pandemic so you know oh. the year before 2019 that was my last event and then started got this podcast this is what i've been doing pretty much sent developed it for a good nine months i would say and then we launched you know last january and we're just you know on the one year anniversary and we're full steam ahead uh, with it. We we do talk a lot of food on the podcast, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. So we'll have, you know, it, it just sort of you will randomly come brother, up. My brother, Reagan, 
he went to NYU hospitality. He's an investor in a lot of restaurants in Austin. Oh, really? Yeah, he absolutely. Was he was a chef. Yeah. I'll get him oh. on the show with you. But Bam, everyone, yeah. Everyone I would love to talk food with him, man. That would be yeah. awesome for He's sure. The guy. He's the guy that knows. Everything like, from scratch. From scratch. Right. That's awesome. Restaurant mm-hmm. in the world. And he, That's and, awesome. You know, he, he's very big into that. That's awesome. I mean, food must be a big part of y'all's life, right? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. It's like that's, that's every day, right? Ever. Yeah. yeah. Every day. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like every the food, day. right? When you get with family, food is like, it's the yeah. center, right? It's like, who's bringing what? What are we eating? Right. Yeah, it's like, it's that's everything. Like, um, what are you cooking? And then, yeah. you know, if it's not something you like to eat, you're like, okay, you're not, I'm, you know, yeah. they won't come. Yeah. So yeah, they, they won't come. That's the first question. Oh, come over here. What are you cooking? Exactly. Exactly. Like, that's so yeah, funny. When you come to Houston next time, you know, text me. But like, dude, I love throwing barbecues, crawfish boils right now in my backyard. Crawfish boils. That's crawfish. it. Yeah. 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 I could. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know, awesome. People cook good food. Oh, man, I've been to, uh, you know what, coincidentally, you know, we were talking about Houston, but, you know, actually in Las Colinas in the Dallas area, yes. there's a ton of huge Vietnamese, yeah. uh, air, you know, yeah. I, date, I dated a girl briefly about 10 years ago when I, I ran this wine bar in Dallas called Dolly, and she was Vietnamese, and she took me, would take me to Las Colinas all the time to eat at these Vietnamese uh places it was great they didn't speak english you're getting real food right it was just i loved it so much just the best food i miss it to be honest with you austin you know i honestly haven't even looked in austin you don't don't crew wine bar my family yeah one of their founding investors really yeah Yeah. i worked at crew i worked at crew in uh in plano like briefly legacy yeah what what uh yeah the legacy Uh briefly just for a few months and i moved on nothing it was great i loved it uh yeah no no dude i've known so many people that have managed or worked at crew you know so many that's a that's a staple in the dallas area for sure uh Mm -hmm. crew yeah i I haven't heard that in you know, in Austin, there's no crew. Yeah, so I just haven't heard that we're, name in forever. We have one in Dominion and one in Sixth Street. Uh, there's a cr- there's two crews here. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. See, I don't get out enough. That's the truth. <laughs> hey, listen, guys. There, in case y'all didn't know, there's been a pandemic. Yeah, right. I know. I've been. <laughs> 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 I've, I haven't left these four walls. No, no, it hasn't been that bad. Uh, th- hey. Thank God, t- Texas is a little more. Yeah, Texas. Lucy more. Goosey, right? Yeah. So you only dated one Vietnamese girl all your life? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's two. not true. That's not true. There was two. It was it was Me two. Too. But one, I, I wouldn't say we dated. She would agree. She would agree. Uh, you know, just adult adult fun, right? Just yeah. adult times. <laughs> adult times. <laughs> hey, I'm all about my my wife's from Spain. I don't care. You know, I'm all about, look, I, I, to be honest with you, uh, she's from uh, Extremadura. That's where she's from. Extremadura. It's uh, northwest of the Madrid area. Gotcha. A por- on the, uh, the Portugal uh, border, right around the Portuguese border. Yeah, Spain's. Spain's great. I lived in Spain for years. That's great. Yeah, my it's the wife best, was the best. so cool. She, she paid for my one-week bachelor party in Ibiza. Oh my God! One week yeah. in Ibiza, Ibiza. <laughs> you know, I almost worked there uh, when I lived over there. Uh, had a contract to go work at a at a hotel, like bartending or something. You know, I was young. It just one? Tra- you traveling. Shy, yeah? I don't remember. To be, I turned it down. I couldn't go because I remember thinking, I won't survive. I'll party the whole time. Like I will oh not survive. God. There's no way I'm going to be able to work. Like this yeah. is insane. They I can't like go. They don't turn the music off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've never even been there. I lived there for years and I never went. I it's... never went. Um, to be honest with you, when you live in Spain, it's not where you go vacation. Right. You know what I mean? It's really yeah. not where, because you're like, well, it's just going to be. It's beautiful, but you're like, it's going to be so crowded with tourists. So you're right. just like, we're, we're going, you know, here or there, or wherever you go. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things. Barcelona's but. beautiful. Barcelona's great, man. Yeah, one of the best cities uh, okay. for sure. Love, love Barcelona for sure. Well, look, guys, you guys have been. Th- this has been awesome. I can't yeah. tell you guys how awesome this has been. I cannot wait. I mean, fingers crossed. We're going to be promoting. We're going to get this out. Let's just hope for 
for another season. I love how they do that with shows. They make people wait for forever. Oh, I and know. Then, you I know, like a whole year. I've had oh, other directors on and other stuff from other shows. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's crazy. It's like, just tell them already. I hate right. that they do that. It's like, ugh, killing me. I, I think it's for the, the tension. I, I think maybe, <laughs> you know, to build, build some sort of a tension, right? It's got to be cinematic in some way. Uh, but anyway, yes, my best of luck to you guys. We'll definitely promote the, uh, the, the golf thing as well. Washington, don't worry about that. I mean, I'll throw it. Uh, I do an yeah. intro for the show too, so I'll... I'll take care of all that for sure. So again, really appreciate you guys. This was so awesome. Uh, this is gonna be a great episode for our fans. They're gonna love this and they learned so much and yeah, just really appreciate you guys. You guys are so much fun. Well, thanks Thank for you having very us. much. And uh, I'm gonna have some cool people come on your show too. Please let me know about uh, Roger for sure, right? I would love to- Reagan. Reagan, I'm sorry, Roger, where did I get? What the? Even, wrong president. Wrong president. I, ro wrong president. <laughs> <laughs> Roger. Right. Right. It's an Asian family. It starts with R. It's one name, Roger. You're like, I got a cousin named Roger. Because every time I hear, <laughs> listen, every time I hear, like, you know, Jesus or something, I'm like, I got two cousins yeah. named Jesus. Like, I, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> friend I have, his partner, I, I keep calling him Sergio. He goes, fuck you. It's Santiago. It's Santiago. It's like, fuck. But you look like my dad's contractor, and it confuses me. I it happens. It happens. Yeah. It's like, God right. damn it. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. What a great way to end. I love it. Well, again, thank you guys so much, man. Uh, you know, please get back to your kids and your life. And I know you guys are super busy with all the stuff you guys got going. So, again, thank you so much for, for taking the time. And, uh, you know, my best to everybody. You know, stay safe out there. Thank you, you guys, thank too. You. All right. Thank you guys so much. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. Yeah.